What makes Roy McIlroy's driver swing so superior on tour? And what are the things that you can take away from it to apply to your game today? In this video, we're gonna discuss the two things that I think Roy McIlroy does that you can apply to your game to make a huge difference in your distance and your consistency. Let's discuss. Real quick, if you're struggling to lower your scores and it seems like there's just a few holes every round that keep jacking up your score or that keep stopping you from breaking 80, breaking 90, breaking 70, there just seems to be a few holes, I wanna offer you my post round interview checklist. This checklist is a PDF worksheet that allows you to figure out what is going on every single round when you seem to have one, two, or maybe three holes that tend to ruin the round. You have a good round going and there's just those few holes. I want to, this, this worksheet's going to walk you through a mindset. It's going to walk you through a process that allows you to figure out why you're having these mistakes. And it's going to help you, sh help show you trends that you, that you might start seeing that's causing you to have these problems. So what I want you to do is I want you to click, uh, look down below in the, in the uh, description and there is a link that'll take you to this guide. I want you to download it, it's completely free. It's going to help you lower your scores, I promise. It'll make a huge difference in your ability to figure out why you're having these random mistakes and what's going on and figure out those trends so you can get to your next best score and whether that be in breaking 80, breaking 90, breaking 100, whatever that may be, it doesn't matter what skill level you're at, this post round interview checklist will make a massive difference. Roy McIlroy is a phenomenal driver of the golf ball, but there's two things I think that makes him a phenomenal driver. There's many things that make him a phenomenal driver, but there's two main points I want to point out because it's going to relate mostly to you. Number one, is that he hits up on the ball. So a couple of things that you're gonna notice, and I'll show you his video in just a second, but he comes pretty far from the inside and that club's moving up into the ball three degrees. At least on the one video I found on TrackMan, he's swinging up on it three degrees. Why is that important? That's important because it allows you allows him to hit it high with low spin, which I think is what a lot of people miss, especially for people that come across the ball like this. They didn't hit down on it and add a bunch of loft, which adds a lot of backspin. So Roy can hit these high launching golf shots with a very low backspin, which I think is really important to understand when you're trying to maximize distance. And one thing that Roy's done really well over the years is be able to hit the long ball for how small he is. He's not super small, but he's not he's not as big as like Dustin Johnson, but he can pound the ball because he comes really far from the inside for hit, for most players, and then he swings up. Now, I don't think you need to come way inside to hit up on it. I just said it's just an observation, but hitting up on the ball is huge. But if you're coming across the ball and over the top, it's hard to hit up on the ball. Now, let's take a look at his golf swing here. So I want you to notice a couple things here. So when you when you look at his backswing and then you look at his downswing, I want you to see that club's coming well from the inside right there, and he's swinging up on the ball, and then he's having a full finish, which I think is the next big piece I want you to understand is having a full finish. He finishes all the way through the ball, all the way to his left side. He's not hanging back. I see that a lot with a lot of golfers. They hang back. They're trying to create speed by hanging back. That actually reduces your ability to create speed the more you hang back. Now, it's different when you push off of it and you're pushing backwards, which then makes you fall backwards. You see some of the long drive guys doing that. But a lot of players I see, they get here and they fall backwards and attempt to hit up on it. And I don't think that's the right way to do it. If you notice how what Roy does, when he comes down, he squats. There's kind of an upward motion of, of his pelvis and then he swings up through the ball and then to a full balance finish. There's no hanging back. I think those two points are key. I think if, number one, you will make sure you hit up on the ball. And what you can do is you can take another golf ball or something in front, in front of your driver and your goal is not to hit this ball is you've got to go, you got to be able to come through the ball and you got to swing up without hitting that golf ball. So let me demonstrate here. Let me hit one shot here. So you got to come through got to swing up on it that's really going to make sure that you launch it high with low spin so if i can point out two things that you need to try at home hit up on the ball use the ball right out in front of it and then get all the way through to a full balance finish don't hang back full finish that's going to make a huge difference in your power it's going to make a huge difference in your consistency it's going to make a huge distance huge difference in your total carry Give that a shot. See you next video. Peace.